Is a quad-core CPU powerful enough to game with a 5600 XT? Or will it bottleneck a GPU that's this powerful? Well, let's play some games and find out. The CPU I'm using in this video is the Ryzen 3 1200. It's a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU that runs out of the box between 3.1 to 3.4 GHz. And according to the January 2020 Steam hardware survey, which was the most current survey at the time I started planning this video, uh, it's right in line with what over 50% of gamers on Steam are currently using. The first game I tested with is Borderlands 3. At 1080p on bad Subscribe. settings, the quad-core Ryzen 3 1200 kept up with the 5600 XT just fine, allowing us to max out our GPU utilization and give us a very nice smooth frame rate well above 60 FPS. Just to rule out system RAM being any kind of bottleneck as well, I tested both 8GB of RAM and 16GB of RAM in my system, and Borderlands didn't seem to care either way when looking at our frame rate. According to MSI Afterburner and RevaTuner, the game did utilize about twice as much RAM when I had 16GB installed, but like I already said, no matter whether I had 8GB or 16GB, game performance was the same. Although Borderlands 3 is a fairly new game, it isn't the most demanding title out there. So on to our next game. In the Division 2 at 1080p on Ultra settings, frame rates were at their worst uh, when I was running around outside, often dropping into the 30s and 40s. When I was in indoor areas of the game, however, things were much better. The CPU bottleneck was still there, but there was enough of a decrease in the load on the CPU that it allowed the 5600 XT to flex its muscles a bit more, and we got a much better frame rate, usually well above 60 FPS. Unlike Borderlands, The Division 2 definitely benefits from having 16 gigabytes of RAM. The frame rate was only slightly higher with 16 gigabytes as opposed to 8, but what was most noticeable was the frame times were much better with 16 gigabytes. The game ran noticeably smoother with 16 gigs rather than with 8. Now I'm sure there's going to be someone that's going to say, You're an idiot. You need to turn the settings down from ultra to higher medium and that will fix the problem. Just to show you turning settings down doesn't fix a CPU bottleneck, here's some footage where I turn the settings down to low. And while we do get a slightly better frame rate than on Ultra, CPU utilization on our quad-core Ryzen 3 1200 is still pegged at 100%, and GPU utilization is only around 50%. I don't know what you think about that, but to me, that basically means you're getting $150 worth of performance out of a $300 graphics card. And come on, let's be real. Who buys a $300 graphics card to play their games on low or medium? The 5600 XT was also bottlenecked by our quad-core CPU in Doom. At 1080p on ultra settings, I averaged around 150 FPS most of the time. When I got into areas like this with lots of demons to fight, that did go down to around 120 FPS, um, which is still amazing. But when you look at the CPU and GPU utilization percentages, you can see that CPU utilization is near 100%. And GPU utilization is only between 50 and 60% most of the time. Despite the fantastic frame rate, we're not getting our money's worth out of the 5600 XT in this title at 1080p. Like Borderlands 3, Doom ran just fine with both 8GB and 16GB of RAM. In both configurations, the game utilized around 6GB of RAM, and the frame rate was the same. Our testing in Far Cry 5 brought more of the same. For the most part, the frame rate did stay above 60fps. When I was driving around and exploring, the frame rate was always good. But in some areas of the map, when I'd engage with the Peggies, it would drop down below our magical 60 FPS. The game still felt totally playable, but again, seeing the GPU utilization at only 60-ish percent
tells us there's a lot more performance to be had from the 5600 XT in this game. When switching to 16 gigabytes of RAM, I didn't notice any difference in performance, so 8 gigabytes is just fine for Far Cry 5. Moving on to everybody's favorite game, Fortnite! The Ryzen 3 1200 and 5600 XT delivered a very good frame rate most of the time. Although the Ryzen 3 1200 can deliver a playable frame rate at 1080p on Epic settings, it's not quite powerful enough to get maximum performance out of a GPU like the 5600 XT. And that is, after all, the entire point of this video to see how powerful of a CPU you need to keep from bottlenecking the 5600 XT. As far as I can tell, using 8GB of RAM in Fortnite performs just as well as 16GB, so nothing interesting to report on that front. The best GPU utilization I saw while using the quad-core Ryzen 3 1200 and Ghost Recon Breakpoint was around 70%. On average though, it sat in the mid-60s. With our resolution at 1080p and the graphical settings on Ultra, I never saw CPU utilization reach 100%, which I'm a little puzzled by, but with the CPU utilization percentage in the 80s and 90s, the frame rate was very often in the 40s, with frequent dips into the 30s, and in areas with lots of NPCs even dropped down into the 20s. Breakpoint is the newest game that I tested, and if this is any indication of what the future of video games holds, uh, when it comes to gaming, it looks very much like quad-core CPUs are at the end of their useful life, uh, in my opinion. And that brings us to the final game I tested, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1080p on the highest graphical preset, our Ryzen 3 1200, once again, was the bottleneck in our system. The worst performance I saw was while running around this village, with the frame rate dropping as low as the 30s. GPU utilization was between 50 and 60% in this area, but when I moved into other areas, like in tombs, and even some outdoor areas that have a more restricted path for you to follow, uh, you know, the more platform game type areas. GPU utilization got much, much better, reaching into the 90s, which in turn pushed our frame rate up over 80 FPS. As for 16 gigabytes of RAM versus 8 gigabytes of RAM, again, I didn't see any performance difference in Shadow of the Tomb Raider by going up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. GPU and CPU utilization were the same, as was the frame rate. Alright, final conclusion time. Uh, after all of my testing, I feel pretty confident saying that if you have a quad-core CPU that's comparable in performance to the Ryzen 3 1200, that your CPU will in fact bottleneck an RX 5600 XT in modern games. The, the list of CPUs you see on screen right now are all quad-core CPUs that have similar performance to the Ryzen 3 1200, so you can expect them to perform very similarly to what you saw in this video. There is a bit of an asterisk next to this list, however, because I don't own or have access to any of these other CPUs to test and verify for myself. So I've had to rely heavily on sites like CPUUserBenchmark.com and CPUBenchmark.net to come up with this list. I feel confident, however, that these CPUs will in fact perform similarly to the Ryzen 3 1200 and will also bottleneck the 5600 XT. So if you have one of these CPUs, or one that's even less powerful than one of these, then I'd recommend either buying a less powerful GPU that better complements your system, like a GTX 1060, GTX 1650 Super, RX 580, RX 590, or RX 5500 XT, or it's time to seriously contemplate upgrading your CPU to something that can leverage all the power the 5600 XT has to offer. So just how powerful of a CPU do I need to have to get the maximum performance out of the 5600 XT, you may be asking. 
Well, the good news is moving up from a straight quad core will pretty much do the trick. I swapped out the Ryzen 3 1200 for a Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which currently sells for 85 US dollars and is a six core 12 thread CPU that operates between 3.2 and 3.6 gigahertz. The 1600 AF increased the frame rates in every game I tested by at least 20 to 30 FPS. And the newest, most demanding titles like The Division 2, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the 5600 XT was able to reach 100% utilization or very near to it which was just what I was hoping to see. Older titles like Doom, Far Cry 5, and Fortnite, however, only reach GPU utilization between 70 and 80% for the most part. I'm not sure what exactly was limiting our GPU in these games though, because CPU utilization was always well below 100%. In Far Cry 5, it never went much above 50%, and in Fortnite and Doom, it ranged between 50% and 70%. Knowing that running games at a higher resolution puts more stress on the GPU, I bumped up the resolution from 1080p to 1440p to see if the lower GPU utilization would persist in these games. And as I suspected, this brought our GPU utilization right on up to the high 90s, right where we want it to be. If you have a system with a Ryzen 3 processor and you're looking to get the most performance possible out of an RX 5600 XT, then upgrading to a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 CPU is gonna get the job done for you. If you have an Intel system with an i3 or i5, you too can upgrade. But finding a CPU that is compatible with your motherboard's CPU socket is going to be a little bit more difficult, uh, especially the older your CPU happens to be. Hopefully this list will be helpful to you. It's a list of CPUs that have similar performance to the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. These are kind of the minimum CPUs I would recommend to upgrade to for anyone that's currently running an i3 or i5 in order to keep your CPU from bottlenecking the 5600 XT. So will your CPU bottleneck a 5600 XT? I'm interested to hear what your system specs are and your thoughts about your PC as well as this video in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, remember to comment, like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and family members so they too can know how much their computer sucks. If you're interested in purchasing a 5600 XT or the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, I've placed a link to my Amazon store in the video description where you can purchase those things along with a lot of other items I've featured on my channel at one time or another. Have yourself a great day. We'll see you next time.